Hey, how's it going everybody? Thanks for tuning in and watching today's video. I'm out here in the woods on a nice long break and super excited. We got some cold weather coming in. Going to be camping with some buddies. Just going to be a really good time. Before that kicks off, I thought I would do kind of an update video on one that I've previously done that got a lot of good feedback. A lot of people were really enjoyed it. And I know me personally, I enjoy watching people's videos like this. We are going to go over an updated a three-day winter camping loadout. So uh, some stuff has changed from the last video that I did on this and I've kind of got it dialed in to handle any kind of weather because we're expecting uh, some kind of wet possible snow uh, later this weekend. So I had to kind of change stuff up based on last year's video that I was hammock camping out of. Unlike the previous video that I did on my three-day loadout, this is different because it's for ground sleeping. Uh, lately my back's been bothering me and for some reason I'm able to sleep really good on the ground when that happens. I've got a really nice pad and I kind of had to adapt this kit to that. Otherwise I'm a big hammock camper. Uh, I love hammock camping. It's no problem to camp in the cold and for the most part it doesn't hurt my back to be hammock camping but I've got to get some kinks and stuff worked out and anyways it's just fun sometimes to sleep under a tarp when it's cold outside. Not much has changed as far as the system that I'm running uh, compared to the last video I did on this. I'm still using the Deep Woods Ruck uh, for a heavier gear kind of trip like this whenever it is colder and you need the extra layers and you need the extra warmth and you want to carry maybe a little bit more food or extra containers for uh, hot liquids and whatnot. But I have changed some stuff up as far as uh, kind of like what's on the outside of the pack. I now have a dry bag from AquaQuest that I have underneath the Deep Woods Ruck. That is pretty much all of my sleep stuff. Um, I put it in that dry bag because that's the stuff that absolutely cannot get wet. I want it to stay completely dry and it's super easy to just detach that from the pack and then have everything that I need to put under my tarp uh, right there. So my sleeping pad, all that, I'll break it down here in a second. And then above that, I have an extra layer of insulation. I'm a big fan of these little folding Z pads like this. I've had this one for quite a long time and it just works well underneath your, uh, pad your sleeping pad to add extra insulation you can get away with running a lighter uh, sleeping pad that way and kind of the weight difference between the two when you combine them is not much more than a heavier insulated pad and I can pull it out from underneath it and actually have a place to sit that's keeping me up off the ground underneath my tarp if it is raining um, or you know I'm making coffee in the morning or whatever so it's a really easy system and uh, it just works well so besides those two things Everything else about this is the same. I'm still running the Tactical Taylor shoulder straps and the Tactical Taylor uh, hip belt, and then also the Tactical Taylor Malice frame. It's their version of the Alice pack frame that's a lot lighter and it's super strong. All the joints are welded. There's no pop rivets or nothing on it. And the Deep Woods Ruck fits perfectly on top of it. Also on the outside of the pack, I have my Tomahawk from Rocky Woodland Forge. Uh, it, it's a it's a beast. It does more than enough for me here. Uh, I'm not needing to carry a, a real big axe to fell any trees or buck up any wood uh, here in our area. If it does get cold enough to have a big long fire like that, uh, it's e it's just as easy as just put the whole tree in there and let the fire bucket up. Um, and the tomahawk works great. It's it's lighter weight, and I can use it for uh, carving and stuff too. It works pretty good on uh, on carving out spoons and and bowls and whatnot. So like I said, I just have the AquaQuest dry bag uh, hooked here to the bottom. Real quick, we can go through this. There's really not a lot to it. This just kind of clamshells open. There's my pad. I'll actually go ahead and kneel on this now. I just have the long straps that Malcolm makes on this uh, running behind the frame around the pack uh, or around the dry bag and then through the last little uh layer of molly right there so inside this is pretty much all of my sweet gear that i'm going to need another reason why i have this dry bag with me is because if we're packing up and it's starting to rain which it's projected to either rain or snow as we go to pack stuff up everything that's been sitting out is going to be wet so everything that i'm walking into the woods with that i can't get wet goes in here and it'll be it'll be nice and dry set up camp get this all underneath my tarp we're, we're ready to rock. Whenever it comes time to leave, I want something that I can put all the wet stuff in and not worry about getting all this stuff wet. So I can put my wet tarp, whatever else in there, dirty laundry, whatever else I can put underneath here, strapped to the bottom, and then all this dry stuff 
will go into my pack that's been underneath my tarp nice and dry. So that's kind of a, another dual option. Um, this is actually something I forgot was in here. This is a, uh, an old hammock chair that I use as a uh, ground cloth. I don't want to go too much into it just because you can't get them anymore, but it's got Cordura on one side and ripstop nylon on the other. Uh, it makes a really good kneel pad, um, or in this case, I can put firewood in it and bundle it up and uh, bring it to camp if I need to. My pad, we'll go over the, the big thing first. This is from Sea to Summit and it's their Etherlite XT insulated and I got the large version. For the longest time, I ran Big Agnes uh, or however you say it, Big Agni, uh, the Q-Core Deluxe insulated one and I slept on that uh, almost the whole time that I was in Alaska in my cabin. We had like a little plywood bunk and until they actually got us mattresses and stuff, I slept on that. So it, it worked super well and it's going on like three or four years old now. Um, still super comfy. With me having some back issues that I do, I like to have pads that are at least three and a half if not four inches thick. And it's been really hard to find one that's that thick durable and light enough weight that it'll pack down small enough and that big agnes for the longest time was well it's developed a slow leak and i just haven't taken the time to figure out where it is otherwise i'd still be running it so i ordered this um and i've had one night of sleep on it well yeah an overnight and it's amazing this is so far one of the best pads that i've gotten um the pad fits inside here and then the other end pulls out and it's a huge uh bellow sack that'll blow the pad up super quick it uh it has an easy valve um that opens and closes and compresses and uh, i think it's like four inches thick i'll do a separate review on this a little bit later when i get some more time with it but that's the pad i'm running keep pulling stuff out of here i've got a ground cloth this is the uh arcteryx or however you say it arctis um, i like that it's a like a neutral color i've got my inflatable pillow and a tough tough possum gear a survival scarf and this i either use to wrap around my face at night um, if it's cold enough that it's going to give me like a sore throat or something in the morning um, or i can put my pillow in here and wrap it up two times and it gives some insulation there and uh, adds a little bit of extra loft and then last but not least the warmest part of everything this is my top quilt from Warbonnet Outdoors. This is a 20 degree top quilt on their Diamondback. It has a zippered foot box and the draw cord at the end. It's got the tabs on the side that I can run toggles through and put it around uh, my pad to where this won't shift off during the night. Um, and I got the longer overstuffed version. Uh, it's just more than enough for my area, for Texas. This is perfect. So. This is actually the biggest part of it, but it's kind of fluffed up right now. You can compress it even smaller if you want. That's the beauty of the down. So this thing is just amazing. I should have never uh, gotten a sleeping bag. I wish I would have had this five or six years ago. It's, it's awesome. So that's what's in the dry bag outside. So all my main sleeping stuff that I need is right there on the outside of my pack, quick and easy to get to, all safe, secure, and dry. Immediately when I open up, the, the pack here. I have two things that I kind of think are important to have towards the top of your pack. One of them is your shell or your rain jacket. Uh, this is one by North Face. Really love this thing. Um, it's pretty much a walking tarp and then your actual tarp to set up. So knowing that I have those two things right off the bat, I don't have to dig around in my pack and go through a bunch of stuff to try to find to set camp up really quick. I can put that on if it's raining and then I can immediately get this set up and then all my sleep stuff is nice and dry still in that dry bag. And then right here, I have my ridge line and now we're ready to rock. We can get our camp set up. We'll move into the main compartment of the pack here. I have a saw. This is a new saw for me. I got it for Christmas. It's a silky big boy. Um, super excited to run this thing. It's a monster so far that I've tried it out. I have a couple of my cooking implements here. So in case you didn't know, the Woodnot coffee press, I'm a big fan of that thing. Having a fresh French press coffee in the woods is awesome. It actually nests really well in its own bag inside of the Pathfinder 
titanium pot. So I know right now they're sold out, but I've been running this Pathfinder titanium pot for a little while now. Um, when it first came out, I grabbed one. Big fan of it, I like the size. And like I said, the whole wood knot uh, coffee press nest right inside of it. So that's my main cooking pot. And then that wood knot doubles as my French press coffee and also uh, a cup to boil water in, um, whatever for meals. I have a second layer of insulation which is an XL jungle blanket. This is also a new item for me. I'm testing out a lot of new stuff, you can tell. I uh, got this for Christmas. I've had the Snug Pack uh, jungle blanket, the regular one, for going on at least five years. And I haven't gotten a new one since. So when I opened this up for my wife, I couldn't believe how much loft and whatever it had. And it's just because what I've been using is, uh, is compressed and, and well used. It still works great but I was curious to see what the XL one would look like and I'm really excited to use this. So I don't like putting these kind of things back in the little stuff sacks that they come with. I just kind of pack my bag and then at the end, I stuff this in all the nooks and crannies to help fill it out. And it also kind of keeps stuff insulated in there. If you do have water, um, you know, you didn't have a chance to set up and you had to sleep somewhere on the side of the road, it keeps your stuff from getting frozen. But regardless, uh, another layer of warmth, the XL jungle blanket. I have a dry, merino wool beanie this one happens to be from uh badger claw outfitters i keep this in here because this is something that i sleep in so this one that i've been wearing all day it's going to be wet and i don't want to try to sleep in that so i keep a dry fresh one in my pack i have my coffee pouch in here is a scoop my kooksa and uh, ground coffee i have my first aid kit this one's made by centerline systems uh, I've got a tourniquet, bumps, bruises, cuts, major bleeding, all the fun stuff. I'm not going to go into this because people get really sensitive when you don't carry the stuff that they want to see in your own personal first aid kit. Then next up I have the T60 survival shelter. Uh, this is just a redundancy of maybe a ground barrier or uh, pull this out and throw it over something if it starts raining uh, to keep it to keep it dry. And I've also Thought it'd be really good to keep in case it starts raining and i don't want to get my nice camera and stuff wet i can throw this over it um and it just weighs next to nothing i'm telling you this is not going to leave my pack i love it keep going and i've got a couple of dehydrated meals here from packet gourmet uh i have three here and then uh, along with some snack bars that i forgot to show you that are in my little coffee kit uh that's plenty of enough food it never fails that you always get a little bit more hungry, but if, if I have to, I'll pack more. But that's just kind of a staple that I carry three hot meals with me, snack bars, and oh yeah, uh, oatmeal. I have some oatmeal in here too, so a lot fits in this little pouch. Oatmeal, uh, two snack bar, three snack bars, and three dehydrated meals. Sorry, four dehydrated meals. And then in the very bottom of the main pocket, I have kind of like my catch-all pouch this is the heaviest piece of kit uh, in my pack but it just kind of has everything that i would want uh maybe leave it home but i just have, i kind of keep it packed like this so it is what it is my fire kit i've got a little uh firebox nano stove in here um, some fire starters matches a tool repair kit from coal cracker bushcraft and yeah that's pretty much it it kind of stays at the bottom and helps give some rigidity to the bottom of the pack so that's it for the main pack. I do have a little sit pad back here, but other than that, there's nothing left uh, in here. On the side pouches, on this outside pouch here, I have gray water filter, and then I have Pathfinder titanium cup and bottle set. If you haven't been able to tell, I have multiple containers and options here because I think it's just really important as the temperature drops that you wanna have options of something that you constantly can keep hot water in if you need next to the fire something that you could you know, drink liquid out of and then a secondary storage area. I made a koozie to fit over all this. I left it at home, but it is what it is. That's what's on that side pouch. And then over here on this side, is kind of like my, just threw a bunch of stuff in here. I've got a little rope dog that I carved out of cedar that holds bank line. My two or my pair of uh, sleeping socks, these are almost come up to my knee. They're by farm to feet, and I'll rock these 
the whole time I was in Alaska. And some days when it was really cold and I'd have to be doing a lot of work around the water and the glacier and stuff, I actually wore these thick boys inside of my lacrosse boots and uh, they're awesome. So I sleep in these, I keep a dry pair of socks with me. So dry pair of socks and a dry uh, hat. I did forget to pack um, two articles of clothing in here to sleep in, which is a lightweight pullover hoodie and a dry shirt. So that's sitting uh, off to the side over there. Gloves, leather gloves, another rope dog, my Baco saw, my Genesis knife that Larry Roberts and I collaborated on out of 52100 steel. Lid to Pathfinder titanium cup and uh, a handful of tent pegs. The last thing that's with me is in the zippered pocket here in the, of the mesh on the lid. And there is a merino wool buff that I can pull over my face and head. And then another little pouch that has spare batteries, compass, and my headlamp. That's what I'd be running in a three, four, five, however long uh, I want to stay out here. As long as I have the food, I'm more than comfortable to, to run this setup for any time during the winter here in my area. Uh, I think it's really cool to share this kind of stuff uh, with you because I get ideas from other people when I see stuff. And it's just kind of a, a good little starting ground if you've never done this before. You can kind of see at least the idea of why you want to uh, maybe have more insulating layers and you want to have dry sleeping stuff for the winter or you want to have more uh, pots and and cups to uh to keep stuff warm and uh and kind of cut down on the dishes and stuff so you don't necessarily have to to buy any of this stuff but it's the idea and the principle behind this is why i, I use this gear and i put a lot of thought into it and over the years i've had uh, stuff fail on me and i've had things not work out the way i thought they would so this is a, a setup i'm very comfortable using and uh, i've got i've got multiple nights under except for some of the new gear but the principles there that blanket looks pretty sweet the new pad oh it's so comfy anyways i hope you enjoyed this and uh, maybe you got something from it and remember get outside and enjoy the woods thanks for watching Brr.